Hello, my name is Billy and I'm a teaching artist with LACMA. Today's art making project is a mixed media assemblage box. The project was inspired by two artists in LACMA's collection. So I would now encourage you to pause the video and go to collections.lacma.org and look up two things. Firstly, Joseph Cornell's The Trajectory of Ursa Major artwork from 1966. And secondly, Betty Saar's Gris Gris Guardian. Assemblage is a work of art made by grouping found or collected elements, often everyday objects scavenged by the artist or bought specifically. You can see in my example here that I have used lots of different materials and objects together. Joseph Cornell collected and carefully assembled objects into small boxes, creating visual poems where light, texture and colour and form play together. He had no official training as an artist, and in fact he was a collector first and foremost. He loved to go to old bookstores in New York City and look for souvenirs, memorabilia, little figurines and objects, as well as even musical scores that he could use in his artworks. The objects he collected often referenced his interests, which were things like music, ballet, and astronomy. In his work, which is called The Trajectory of Ursa Major, he's referencing the star constellation that sometimes we know as the Big Dipper. In fact, you might have even seen it in the night sky. Cornell uses circular and spherical objects that might remind us of orbiting planets and stars. Betty Saar is another artist who's well known for her assemblage artworks. She's African American and she was born here in Los Angeles. She actually went to see an exhibition of Joseph Cornell's work and is influenced by his practice. For Saar, objects hold special memories and histories that she uses and recontextualizes in her work. She uses symbols and objects that she's collected here in LA, but also in her travels across the world in places such as Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Caribbean. Saar also wants to question ideas about race, gender, politics, beauty and identity. So the objects that she chooses to use in her work often connect or point to those ideas. In her work Gris Gris Guardian, she uses materials that are used in spiritual rituals such as braided rope, candles and petrified wood. The sculpture itself even has pillars that might remind us of a spiritual structure like an altar or a temple. By combining these objects together in this way, I think that Saar is asking us to question how ancestry, history and spirituality can influence the way that we make works of art. So let's look at what materials you're going to need for this project. Firstly, you're going to need a recycled cereal box, just like this one here. Cereal box is the perfect size for this project, so find one of those. Uh, you also need a pair of scissors. You'll need some different kinds of tape. Um, I've got two different coloured masking tapes, but they're quite good, strong masking tape, very sticky. Uh, if you don't have this, you could also use another strong tape, like duct tape. Um, but just make it so sure it's something strong. You'll also need uh, some other kind of recycled cardboards. Can be good, something thicker uh, is a good idea. Could be the side of a box. You need tacky glue. There are some parts of the project you can do by using a glue stick, but tacky glue is a little stronger and we'll need it for some parts of this. And then with tacky glue, you always need something to apply it. So you can use an old paintbrush as long as you make sure to wash it thoroughly afterwards so that you don't stick the bristles together. Um, or you could use a popsicle stick, something like that. 
You could also use some acrylic paint if you happen to have that around the house, but that's completely optional. So I used acrylic paint to paint the outside of my box, but you don't have to do that. Um, so only if you have it. We also need some different types of yarn. So you could have, I have an old shoelace here, yarn or even ribbon would work. Uh, as you can see, I stuck things to the outside of my box by tying a string around the outside. But you don't have to do that. You can also stick things directly to the box, even if you don't have string. Um, you'll also need some uh, patterned fabrics or patterned papers like I have here. And then finally, you're gonna need some found objects and images. So I went through some magazines and found some images that kind of connected to memories or resonated with me in some way. So I have those. And then also small objects. So since this is assemblage, we're using objects that have some kind of meaning. Um, so you can see I have a collection of different little objects here. I have things that were gifted to me by family members. I have little stones I collected in a special place. Whatever objects that you decide to use, think about the objects and the histories that they have um, and make sure that you have permission to use them in your work. The first thing you're gonna do is cut out a hole in the center of your cereal box. I like to leave a border around the outside so that it frames my assemblage. The safest way to do this is to open one end of your box and cut through it and tape it back together afterwards. Now you're ready to start adding colour and shape to your box. Before you start thinking about putting objects inside your box, you want to think about the outside of your box. Since this is a three-dimensional sculpture, you want to think about all sides of it. So here you can see I used acrylic paint to paint the outside of my box in layers, so the back and the sides. But if you don't have acrylic paint or any other kind of paint, you can also cover your box in coloured or patterned papers or even fabric. So you can see here, I covered one of my cereal boxes with red and yellow paper and also red masking tape. So you can just take a little bit of glue and use it on the corners of your paper. If you use it at the edges and not in the middle, I mean you could use it in the middle as well, but if you use it at the corners, the very corners of your paper, it'll make sure that it sticks it down and you don't have bits of paper kind of curling up. So you can create all kinds of patterns and designs on the outside of your box as well. When your box is ready, lie it flat on the table and start with your background. Create some kind of environment for the rest of your objects. So you're going to use your more two-dimensional materials for this. So for example, here I have some fabric I've collected, some pattern paper, and also a picture from a magazine of books that I found. It sort of reminded me of a room in my childhood home. So you're gonna start out by choosing where you want those to go inside your box and gluing them down to the base. Now let's create your midground. So this is where we're gonna take your heavier, more three-dimensional objects and place them inside your box in front of the background. But since this is a sculpture, we can also think about how high up or low we want our objects to be in the space. So I've made little platforms in order to raise my objects up to different heights. There's a few ways you can do this. If you want smaller platforms, like I did here, I actually used plastic and recycled food container lids to make smaller platforms that I place smaller objects on top of. The larger pieces I did here, I used pieces of recycled cardboard. So if you have a piece like this, uh, you can paint it or cover it in coloured paper to add colour and shape, and then use it as it is as a slightly larger platform. Or, 
you can use uh, the side of a cardboard box which is slightly thicker and cut it up into squares. If you're going to do that, you might need the help of an adult to cut the thicker cardboard just because it can be a little tricky. Once you have your squares like this, you can glue them together in a stack to create your platform. So I'll show you, I've, I've done this one ahead of time, so it's all dried and stuck together. Um, but what you're going to do is just take a little bit of glue, cover the top of your square, you want to go all the way to the edges to make sure it's nice and strong. And then you'll place it on top of your platform to finish it off. You'll notice that this wiggles around a little. That's because it's not dry. So you're going to need to place your platform off to the side to dry for a little while. Once that they're all dry and ready to go, you can actually then glue your platforms into your box just to make sure that they don't fall over and move around. So you will do that with all of the different platforms um, and then you'll need again to leave it to dry for a little bit. Now finally, let's create your foreground. This is the part where we're again gonna use more 2D found images and patterned papers. Take any loose objects out of the box and lay it flat on the table again. You might need a little help for the next part of this video, so feel free to pause and go and get help from an adult. What we're going to do is lie our string flat on the table next to our box like this. We're going to turn our box over on top of the string where we would like it to be in the front of our box. So we're going to tie a double knot and this is where you might need a little bit of help because we want to tie it nice and tight. So you tie the first knot like so and then ask your friend if you need that help to put a finger on your first knot and then tie a second knot so that it stays nice and tight like that. So now you'll turn your box over and you can see that it's sitting straight down the middle of our box like this. So now you're going to be able to take your image, found image, and place it somewhere along the string and use a piece of tape. So you'll take a little piece of tape, some of your masking tape maybe, and place it on the string and then use that to secure your image to the string like so. If you have any trouble doing that or you don't happen to have any string, as I mentioned, you can also glue your images to the outside of the box. Now you can finally place all of your objects inside your box to finish your assemblage. Once your work is finished, take a look back at it again and think about what story your objects tell now that they're all together. How has the meaning of each individual object changed now that it's connected with all the other things in your box? Share your artwork with someone and explain your creative choices. So explain why you use certain images and objects and how they connect together. As always, we would love to see your artwork. So go ahead and take a picture and then have an adult post it to social media and tag at LACMA. And if you would like to see more Make Art at Home videos like this one, click the subscribe button below to be notified when new videos are released. Thank you so much for making art with me today. Uh, stay creative, keep making things at home, and I'll see you next time.